Hey there guys, how's it going? I am Parmvir Chal, and I am a tutor at the Edison High School Writing Center. Uh, what I'm going to be talking to you about today are different revision strategies we can implement through Microsoft Office Word uh, to improve our formal writing. Er, and these revision strategies are more specific things uh, to improve our writing in terms of active voice and passive voice, cliches, colloquialisms, contractions, how we can uh, fix errors like those. Now, in order to do this, we have to uh, set a few options in Word first. So, first we'll go to File, and in older versions, the File button is actually the uh, Office button. It brings up a similar menu, and the following menus should all basically be the same. But after you click the File button, you want to click Options, which I just did and options will bring up this menu right here. Uh, here we want to go to proofing and then scroll down to when correcting spelling and grammar in Word. Now here uh, we, want have, we want to have all these things checked already and what we under writing style we want to check grammar and style. Uh, if we go into the settings for this we can see how there are more stylistic things up here um, that we can tell it to check which I don't which I don't have set. Um, under grammar, I have everything checked off, and under style, which are the, which is what we just uh, asked where to check for, things like fragments, gender-specific words, possessive and possessives and plurals, sentence structure, unclear phrasing, all these kinds of things. Um, and we can do this in order to make our formal writing clearer, more concise, and just improve the more specific things to make a better overall product. So if we click OK, um, Microsoft Word has given us those blue lines of grammatical errors all over here. Um, so first things first is active voice and passive voice. So in a sentence that uses active voice, uh, the subject of the sentence performs the action expressed in the verb, whereas in a sentence that uses passive voice, the subject is acted upon and he or she is receiving the action expressed by the verb. So what I mean by this is that here we have a sentence that's using active voice, so the boy threw the ball. Now the subject is the boy, and he's performing the action, which is throwing, um, or which is throwing the ball. And then in the same, if we express this same idea in passive voice, uh, the subject is being acted upon. So the verb is being thrown, and the ball is thrown, and the boy is receiving that action. So now we have this uh, passive voice underlined here, and if we right-click, because this is a simple sentence, Microsoft Word will actually give us a way to correct this. So it'll tell us to change it to the boy through the ball, and now it's active voice. And if your formal writing requires that you use active voice, this is uh, how you want to do this. However, if you can, if you are allowed to use passive voice, you can simply go into options and uncheck uh, this setting. Another common error in formal writing is the use of cliches. So cliches are phrases and words that aren't, um, they're used, they've been used so often that they aren't original anymore. So one very cliche phrase is, there's no place like home. Um, and Microsoft Word doesn't seem to want to uh, check this one, which is a problem that occurs somewhat um, in that Microsoft Word, it's only a word processor, and it can't check as a uh, live tutor as like a real tutor can. Um, so everything this Microsoft Word suggests we have to take with a grain of salt, but generally like we saw in the active voice and passive voice example, it'll be correct. Now if you come down here to colloquialisms, um, colloquialisms are phrases that we use in conversational language are writing, but we shouldn't use in formal language or writing, and, but they're also not slang. So the example I have here is, he is kind of impatient. Now, we say kind of, or at least I know, I say kind of a lot in, um, in like conversational language, so it's suggesting that we change this to somewhat, which is more formal, and um, improves the overall tone of that sentence. Another, quite possibly one of the most common mistakes in formal writing z's of contractions and a contraction is essentially a shortened version of a word um, 
So the example I have here is I don't have time to study and we simply change don't to do not and that has been taken care of. And Microsoft Word also highlights the I and telling us to use the first person which um, we will now look at as well. Uh, certain types of writing, formal writing, allow first person but then other types they don't. And the best way to explain this is that if we have a sentence using first person, the subject of the sentence is described using I or we um, from a personal perspective, whereas in a sentence using the third person, the subject is described using he, she, or they from a more objective point of view. Um, now if we look at these examples, the first person example says I cannot stand the wood paper, and then the third person example is he cannot stand the wood paper. Um, now, in formal writing, we generally want to avoid first person because it, uh, first of all, because it's um, almost redundant, it's generally agreed that in formal writing, if you write something in the, in whatever kind of paper or assignment it is, it, they're your views, so it's redundant to use I. Um, but then again, it also makes it seem less professional if we use first person. So we can simply change this to one cannot stand the wood paper and that works as well. Um, fragments are more uh, common errors in formal writing. These don't occur too often, but they are still pretty relevant that we should talk about them. So a fragment, some of the students in Advanced Composition 3, or first of all, fragments, it's a phrase that doesn't have an independent clause, which means it can't stand by itself. So the fragment I have here, some of the students in Advanced Composition 3, it's um, incomplete. What about the students in Advanced Composition 3? We don't have anything about them right there. So if we want to convert this into a sentence, I have another example of a sentence down here, and we have some of the students in Advanced Composition 3 are lazy, uh, which gives, uh, which describes them. It makes this a full sentence. Now, if we want to correct this one, all we have to do is say, are smart. And we're done. The fragment is now a sentence. With jargon, jargon is very uh, specific. Um, there's special words that are used in particular professions or fields of study, so political jargon, military jargon, legal jargon, those kinds of words. Um, now, I, right here I have an example using medical jargon. His condition is becoming agonal. Um, now, although this is jargon, like I mentioned earlier, Sometimes Microsoft Word won't pick up on errors like these, but this word is considered jargon as it is specifically used in uh, medicine, and what it means is that condition is, uh, in this sense, the condition is essentially worsening. But that is an example of jargon, and we want to avoid this for the sake of clarity in formal writing. Um, sometimes uh, we can make it more complicated if we use more complicated words, and we should keep the words simple. Well, not necessarily simple, but as long as we use jargon, we also need to make sure that we define it and we don't use too much of it. Um, and our last issue is subject-verb agreement. So this one is slightly more obscure than the other ones. Um, in the sentence that uses singular subjects, essentially, the accompanying verbs should also be singular, while in a sentence that uses plural subjects, the accompanying verbs must also be plural. So for example, right here I have an example of disagreement, the laptop or the charger are in my backpack. Now R is a more plural verb, um, and the subject is singular because it's the laptop, it's either the laptop or the charger. Now we can fix this by saying charger is, which is the example of agreement I, I have down here, or we can also say fix it by saying the laptop and the charger are in my backpack. And those are two ways we can fix this issue. Again, it's less prominent, um, but it's still relevant that we should discuss this. Well, I think that is it. So I hope this helped. And if you have any other questions, I will link this document as a PDF into uh, the description of this video. So if you want to refer to it again, that'll be an option for you. Anyways, please comment, like, and subscribe, and hope you enjoyed the video.